and when they are full and out of the box. And hope you enjoyed Speed Toasties, by the way. So it's going to be better switching for them. <laughs> okay, so we're going to do the bust for socials and events in offices. We have four candidates. Um, from the past, he cannot be here, so I'm going to read out their bust. And then we have Lloyd, Matt, and Sarge. Okay, so I will read out the first, and then we'll go on to everybody else. Okay, so imagine I'm going to get the block here. <coughs> okay. I'm experienced in the field of organising events. I've organised school discos, cake sales, sports events, and trip to York in order to raise three thousand pounds in two years, so that Tas Tasmanian Tasmanian exchange was possible. At secondary school, I was nominated to be sports captain, which meant organising teams for sports, sports day, but also planning non-alcoholic socials such as going to London, but also to make such arrangements uh, for matches against other schools. It was possible for me to make these events successful as I am well organised, work well alone, better, but even better in a team. I have great social skills and I'm very approachable and work well under pressure. I think these skills are vital to the position I'm going for. To be a successful social social officer, I believe that all groups at university should be thought of when planning these events, i.e. internationals, people who don't consume alcohol, and those that don't. I have come up with a few ideas already in which all groups can be involved. If I was to become one of the social events officers, Bile would go Disney or Marvel. For those of you who don't consume alcohol, you'd still get to take part in a Disney-themed mocktail making class. If I were to become one of the social events officers, Freyland would do the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. For people who don't consume alcohol or want a quieter night in, Freyland Common Room would turn into a Fresh Prince of Bel Air marathon with snacks and refreshments. This means students can either take part in the fancy dress pub dog, dress as their favourite character from a Fresh Prince, or sit down, relax, and enjoy a funny night with the other students. Freyland would also go Rubik's Cube, so dress in multiple colours and come in one colour. Um, when the event is organised, I will again go from flat to flat and advertise and sell tickets face to face, but also have posters and announcements online just in case someone misses me so they know where to come and get tickets or information for the event. I'm dedicated to this position because I know how important it is to make new friends, especially during Freshers Week, but also to have a good night. University is where you're supposed to make memories and lifelong friends. So let's make these ha those happen. And make every event legend, wait for it, dairy. All you have to do is vote for Cassandra B to become your next socials and events officer, and she will fight for your right to party. Okay. Um, <laughs> Okay. Hello guys, um, I just want to thank you all for coming tonight. Uh, I'm Lloyd, I'm a second year engineering student, and I'm going to tell you why I want to be a social and events officer. Um, as a second year, I feel like I've come to know Manchester a lot better, like I know how the like and how the college system works and I've been I I used my first year basically just as an opportunity to go around maybe all the bars and all the clubs just to see like what's the best one because that's really my interest and one of the reasons I want to become the social tech. And then um, also in my first year I was a member of many societies like so now I know now what makes the social good or what makes the social bad so I've got that experience for me. So in that way I, I can use that knowledge to make, make sure that every social that I would organise with my fellow social officer to make sure that every social would be great. So why would you choose me? To begin with, um, well, without stating the obvious, I like, I like socialising and going out. Um, yeah, um, and also I've got a lot of um, experience with organisational skills. Um, like one of my one of the best examples probably was when I was in sixth form and I had to organise my um, Christmas ball for the whole school, for the whole sixth form. And well, um, it didn't start off very smooth because by 8 pm people had pre drunk their way to be, like, some of them could barely even walk. 
So that was a big obstacle for me. But either way, as a team, we still managed to like, get things running smoothly and everyone ended up having a good night. Um, I really enjoyed a lot of files events last year. Um, most of them had a good turnout, and I thought that a lot of them were organized very, very well. Um, if I get elected, I hope I can carry this on. Um, by coming up with like new events that I've thought of, you know, um, <coughs> finding new ways to promote them around, which is very important for success, I think, so you can get the maximum amount of people to come. Um, one idea I've got um, is for it's like to have more sports events. Because um, when I came, well, I didn't apply for FILE because of the sporty college that it's renowned for. But um, I think that's important for, like, we, if we do that for people who have joined FILE for that reason. And then we, maybe we could have day trips to Manchester somewhere where we could um, go visit Premier League stadiums and watch a few games. Or maybe after, for a night out point of view, we could go out in all of the theme. So maybe pub golf, for example, if you have done that before. If not, it's just like a game where you go through a back, back row and you follow various rules and you dress up in like pretentious golf stuff. And, and, yeah. um, so that, that could be a fun way to get to get people to know each other and we could cooperate with other sports teams as well. So maybe then people could be interested in joining another team. Um, that's just one of my many ideas I've got, so if you've got any questions, feel free to ask, and thank you for listening. Good evening everyone, I'm Matt, I'm 19, I'm from Cheshire, and the last two years of my life I've been living in Tennessee, America. I love sport, but more importantly I love good night out, night out is literally the favourite part of my week. I look forward to it from the moment I wake up on a Friday, and when it's the weekend, I just go crazy. <laughs> so, I'm well organised, really keen, and basically really excited about the prospects this role would bring. I get more satisfaction out of organising an event, and I love to see the outcome, as I have in the past. Before com coming back to the UK, obviously I didn't know too much about alcoholic socials, but obviously there's a lot more to socials than just getting really drunk. So one of the main ideas I've come up with is, considering how diverse the international population is, the file, I think we should embrace it and learn more about other cultures. So this is why I thought we should have different theme nights for food tasting and different alcoholic drinks and different cultures so people can experience, meet new people and learn more about them. Furthermore, that's creating like an international pub golf night where you can travel the world trying different drinks from different countries. Um, in terms of activities and socials in the day, the Lake District should be used, I think, and exploring that. And also trips to Manchester, Liverpool and the Blackpool Illuminations. And the final idea I had was a file house World Cup <laughs> with lots of mini activities so you can meet everyone in your house and really get to know them. So obviously socials are nothing without lots of promotion and detail planning. So I feel as though ensuring that the message is out there early would be the best way to ensure that everyone knows. And I would try and go around in person to flats and sell tickets and let people know about events. Particularly for big events, it'd be essential to ensure the tickets were bought early. So being a first year, you might think I like a lot of experience, particularly living in America, I don't know much about alcoholic socials at the moment, but in America I was involved in planning socials for my football team. We volunteered in the community in the inner city and went to read with them, so I had to organize that. And more importantly, I volunteered at the end of season meal where I had to book the, book the venue, sort the food, and basically get all the money and things, so I feel as though that's good experience for me. So obviously file is the best college on campus, and if you want to keep that tradition going, you should vote me for your social rep. Thank you.
Uh, hi, I'm Sajab Sal, um, I'm a second year management student and obviously going for social and events officer. Uh, why I believe I should be social officer? Uh, first and foremost, I'm a very social per uh, person, which is key to the role. Um, I'm sure a lot of you know I like to go out a lot, and I'm going to have a good time. <laughs> um, furthermore, as well as being very social and outgoing, I am a responsible person, and this is shown by my role as fresh as red this year. Um, I also have some experience in arranging events, as I used to have my dad in a business where he used to arrange Diwali Christmas and New Year's parties. And this involved me getting involved in all aspects of arrangement, from publicising the event, to sewing out food and drinks, DJs and venues. Um, so what I would like to do as social officer, first of all I'd like to build on what I believe has been a fantastic effort by the current social officers. For example, I'd like to continue running their ideas, such as trip to Liverpool, Manchester and Preston. Um, I'd also like to continue running non-alcoholic trips, such as to Trafford Centre, the Lakes, and maybe like Blackfield Pleasure Beach. However, I'd also like to arrange more socials within Lancaster, as I believe more people get involved on these socials. Um, so, for example, where the whole of the out wearing the same t-shirts, like Big Night Out. And as I believe this brings the college closer together. Um, I'd also like to hold many non-alcoholic socials, such as game nights. I'd definitely like to continue the quizzes. And also encourage file members to make use of the bar and co uh, the common room. Um, some ideas I have um, for, for example, extra. I'd like to have like, broader themes, like this year's theme is Toy Story. I believe like more people would have got involved and been more interesting if it was like, for example, a Disney theme, as they'd have more options. And also um, themes like just the simple theme like orange, where people can just go out all dressed in whatever they want that's orange. Because <coughs> then this is like cheaper to buy costumes and decide for ideas on what to dress up as. So maybe students would be more willing to go to socials. And finally, I'd like to work closer with other members of the JCR to increase attendance on these socials. Um, I'd just like to end by showing my dedication to Firewood. This is shown as I'm not, I've not only nominated myself for the JCR this year, but I also nominated myself last year. And this shows I want to uh, be an integral part of the college. Um, I also get involved with many things, such as trips when I can. I've been a freshers rep, so I've been on many of the socials. And I'm also a part of the Fowl College Blue Team. Uh, thanks for listening and vote for me if you want a year to remember. Thank you. Right. Yeah, I did. My hand is in my hand. Yeah, exactly. Um, can each, I know some, I know that especially mentioned it, and a couple of other, the other two, uh, you may have mentioned it, I'm not during your house. Um, can you just give me an example of a non alcoholic social that you'd like to run throughout the year um, in lieu of the Bible where social offices have to run kind of a variety of both? Um, well, I know that I think there's a few been helped before, but I really like the idea of using the facilities that we have here in the FEL, like the FEL bar. If we could work with them to have deals on a specific night, which would bring people down just a chill night, like food, offers on food, and then just maybe like them export skills. I think, I think they've worked pretty well in the past, so I think that's something I should carry on. Well, the idea I talked about in my speech of having different cultured nights events throughout the year. So throughout the year you could explore a variety of different cultures, try the food, and if there's people in the college from their countries, they, they could like talk and give a presentation or something so you could learn. Um, I think towards the start of the year, um, like a cross-campus treasure hunt would be good because this would get uh, students involved in uh, learning what campus is like and finding places because I know when I was after Freshers Week, in the first few weeks, like, I was struggling to find lectures and this got me quite stressed, so like a treasure hunt also would help on that. What did you mention in your manifesto that you was cater for students on budget social? So I'm going to come to everyone. What social could you do on a budget that you think attracts students to go on? Well, I think I was, um, on scanning some of the university's like, facilities, maybe like, look on the um, what's on offer for people with purple gap. And then I have one in mind, this would also, also benefit people like, who don't drink. Um, the Alton Towers trip, I know that there's a few 
going on in the university like at the moment. But I think we should do it more often and utilize it more. So not only you can have a good time whilst it not being expensive, but you can let the twelve people know that um, the offers are there for them and then you should use it more often. Maybe create a social in the bar every now and then with like a DJ. So it's cheaper, you don't have to pay to go into town. You don't have to buy drinks in the bar if you don't want to. It'd just be cheaper for people to just walk down from flats and do pressures or come onto, into, onto campus and do them. Um, like I said, although I um, do like going to other cities like Preston, Manchester, Liverpool, I would increase socials in Lancaster itself because I believe like most more students get involved in these because they are more affordable. And the, the not much of the JCO budget has to come out of socials like this. Um, question to Satch. Last year you ran the publicity officer. This year you're running the social events officer. Um, can you explain why and why? Uh, yeah, explain why, please. And um, why not run the publicity officer again? Yeah, yeah uh, I believe last year I wasn't as confident as I am this year. Obviously, I have been a year at the uni, I feel more confident now to go for a role that I believe is more engaging, that has more um, that has more to do with it. Like, for example, publicity is just about communications, and although I believe I do have some skills, I also believe I have experience and skills in social events, so I'm confident enough to go for that now. Alright. Alright, um, even though it's not in your remit to do the week before quiz, uh, would you be willing to carry it on every week as an episode, or would you be willing to how to improve weekly so how are you going to improve the weekly Yeah, I'd definitely keep running it. And um, I've been to a few myself, and uh, I think it's a great idea for like a Sunday evening where people don't really want to go out, and it's also you don't have to drink alcohol. And um, the way I'd improve it is I like the way that on one of the quizzes I went to, there was like an interactive part of the quiz where you can rather than just answering questions, there was like different competitions, like you can get the first. ATM bank card receipt thing. I think things like that are really good. So that's how I'd agree with it. I would definitely run it, but what I would do was promote it better. Because after Brushes Week, I didn't know for a few weeks that it actually was run every week. I don't know if that's my part not being looking on social networks, but I had no idea. So I'd make sure that everyone knew and just that it was held every week. Kind of thing. Yeah, I'd also keep running it because I'm a massive fan of, of quizzes and I've been to various ones. Um, one I've been to which was quite interested in the idea was um, you could get a mobile app and then like maybe people beforehand would download it and then um, when you answer questions they kind of judge like the speed of the answer and this also like, enables you not to cheat because it detects if you've like, been off the app or anything so that's a good Reliable way to have fun. Okay. Robin? Um, can you please tell me the VP socials, CCO socials, and the full time so that means talking about the socials? The VP socials and file? Yeah. The CCO is it real life faith for social? Mm -hmm. And um, but F2 is um, Emily. Emily Oculus. Yeah. yeah. Um, I know VP Social is Christy HP. <laughs> the Social <laughs> Office oh, is yeah. right now, Robin and Aaron. Um, the CCO in Lusu is Clay Fay, and I'm not sure if that's the one. Um, by looking at your time, you nominate yourself. You all nominate yourself quite late in the week. What took you so long to nominate yourself to go? Okay, um, I'm sorry. That's a good question. But um, I, I was I was planning like to enroll myself like for the whole time, but I just wanted I'm I'm not very sure to be honest, but I, I think it was just a matter of like work and stuff, and then <coughs> I really wanted to make sure that if I actually wanted this role, so I just wanted time to think about it, and then yeah, I think I actually do. Fit this I'm going to be completely honest and say I couldn't figure out how to do it. So I have to get someone to help. 
I'm going to be completely honest and say I have no idea. So I kind of left it late and I had to ask a friend to come. Um, I was always going to go for the JCM, but I was always I was stuck on what position to go for. So obviously I went for publicity last year. So it's like that communications officer, which is quite similar. Socials and events, or VP socials and events. And after researching on roles, I decided that this was the right one, which is why it took me a bit of time. Right, and um, some of the points of the In the past year, after what events have you attended that was put on? And if so, which one did you like the most and why? What well, if you didn't like one? Can you say why it was like you attended the group? So, what events have you been to and which one did you like most? Um, well, in the last year, I went to the Freshers Ball, the Christmas Ball, the trips to Liverpool, extra, uh, quite a lot of them. Um, I think one of like, the best was the Christmas Ball because I really like the casino aspect of that. And the chocolate fountain is quite good too. Um, if I could improve one, I'd probably say. Um, that's not a real quite good to be fair. Maybe the freshest ball, because like, I don't think as many freshest reps went. And we got quite close to our freshest reps in freshest weeks, so maybe including them in it more. Um, I went to a lot of uh, quizzes, which I enjoyed, uh, as I said earlier, and really to enjoy the quizzes. And I remember last year, I think it was closer to the end of the year, where the big night out was, and I think that was like after exams. I did enjoy the night, but one thing I got quite annoyed about it was um, there was like very strict timing about moving from one place to the other. I know it's important for like, like some of the reasons, but like everyone's in groups with each other and no one gets lost. But I think by that time, because everyone's been in like stuff like the whole year, I think we should have, have a bit more freedom. Well other than the events in Freshers Week, I've only really been to one pub quiz and I enjoyed that. But I'm going to the Winter Ball next week, so, so. Okay. Any other questions? If you could arrange like hypothetical scenario where you've got you know X amount of money to spend, there's, there's no limit. What would it be? I think you just start. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So, so the question is: in a hypothetical situation where you've got unlimited budget, what social would you do? You start. If I was allowed, I would make project X. <laughs> it would just be incredible on my cast of cameras. Because um, I enjoy going to like, gigs and stuff, I'd um, try to find out beforehand what if you'd be interested in, as in if it was going to like a rock concert in Manchester or maybe, I don't know, sort of mini dance festival or, or whatever, and then I'd invest a lot of money into that. Um, I'd take everybody on an, ex an exotic cruise around the world um, where you can do many things including alcoholic stuff like partying and non alcoholic stuff, which I strongly feel is sports. Is that? Cool. Can you each give me a time that you've worked as a team to create an event social or described? So, examples of when you went to the team to create a social event or event? Yeah, uh, like I said, in my speech, I we create like events such as the Valley New Year's and Christmas parties. So I used to play a big part in that. I used to make like the posters for him to publicise it, sell tickets. I used to help him order his food, find out like the calculations on how much we needed, what it was going to cost, and then ultimately, ultimately work out how much we were going to sell the tickets for. Well, in America, as I said, must be when I ran the end of season, so it was a meal slash party, but not a whole lot, obviously. Just had to arrange all the venue, the tickets, the food, just inviting everyone and just ensuring that everything runs smoothly. Yeah, as I said earlier as well, um, I, I, had, I was in part of the team of four organising the um, sixth form uh, Christmas ball, which uh, had about nearly about 100 people attending. And then that included the contacting the venue, getting buses, organising food, and like, make sure, making sure everyone had. Great time, all of that. Cool. Christy, um, what would you do if you are to contact or organize a friend with your team to go to a event? 
And um, what would you do if you were struggling to contact or organize an of my head for a Okay, so if you struggle to contact the TV social. Um let's go to a member of JCL, maybe the president. And or try and contact them, try and bring them to email. Um, and if not, I'd have to if I can't contact anyone of uh, higher experience, I'd make a decision myself. And notify does not have done that. Like you said, I'd try and contact all the other members of the JCR and get their opinion on what they think is best, but if I had no other opportunity, I'd just take the initiative, maybe ask for some support and just go for the option I think is best. Yeah, hopefully if, if there are two um, decisions for this role, hopefully we'd be able to work in you know, cooperation, so hopefully that would not have to happen. But if so, I'd say also as well, I'd take the decision into my own hands and then just Make sure that's the right one. Okay. Alright. Um, how would you try to involve students that are not going to participate? So students that are not going to participate, how would you try to involve? I wouldn't like to force them because obviously not every social is going to assume everyone because you're not going to have to you're not going to want to go to everything. But just to get the voice out, I I personally go around with the flats and then maybe sell the tickets. So maybe if they didn't want to go out to start with. I could provide them with information about the social or the event that could that might change their mind. So yeah, just cooperation with them, I think would be good. We'll find out if like their friends are going and maybe ask them to talk to them. But if they really don't want to go and but don't think they enjoy themselves, then you can't I don't think to really force them to. It's their decision at the end of the day. So um, yeah, I'd actively go and talk to uh, members of files like Perhaps with the international officers or publicity and communication officers, and just get them just know just so they know what um, the social is about, and so they're aware of they're aware of it, and then ultimately it's their decision. Right. I don't need to think about this question on the first answer. If you can be any drink, alcohol, non alcohol, why would you be different? Okay, so it's the drink okay. question. And what can you do? Um, I'd be. A, Cold beer because I'm calm and cool and collected. However, <laughs> if you have too much of me, I can be quite merry and happy. Calls me because I'm probably the best in the world. Oh, nice. <laughs> Does it have to be alcohol? No, 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 no. Okay. Um, Well, I'd be cook, simply for the reason because you can enjoy it. You can all look alcoholic and being alcoholic as a mixer. So you can have events. Like, and I'll be good for events. Well, both. I'm not good. Okay. Christine. <laughs> and while you're a social officer, uh, you'll have close contact with the college admin and the power principal. Do you know who you are? Okay, so the question is do you know who the college administrator and the principal of the college are? Do you know the principals of the college? Um, what's his job? Um, who's the other? Frank Skinner. Not Skinner. Not Skinner. Is it Frank? <laughs> is it Frank? Is it Frank? Is it Frank? Okay, that's good. Okay. Sue Sommers. Okay. Yeah. 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 Right, moving on to names. Uh, what way have you got students, off campus students, off campus students? So what, so, is, so is it what ways? Yeah. Okay, what ways have you got off campus first year students? Well, I'm living off campus this year. So um, specifically third year in the group in that Yeah, because yeah, in, in the city block. Mm -hmm. um, well if if there were socials that were arranged to be on campus, like I have got I know a people I know a lot of people who live in City Block as well, so maybe that, somehow I could use them to get in contact with them. If not mm -hmm. I had to just try to contact them personally beforehand if they were if they showed interest in coming to the social and then just arrange, arrange a meeting point and then all of us go together to the campus. 
not just in Shorter's World, in Freshers Week, with their Freshers reps, make sure they meet a lot of other people profile. So maybe bring them onto campus before they go out at night to ensure that they're meeting other people that aren't just the people from their flat, because it might be harder for them, so it might be less of them. And um, I was also going to say I'd encourage their Freshers reps to keep in contact with them and also uh, contact them myself when I know socials are up and make sure they all know about it. Simon, um, in your, each of your manifestos, neither, neither of you have actually mentioned the specific thing you have to achieve by the end of your year in office. Um, so could you, could you all just give me one thing you'd like to have done by the time it comes around to December, should, should you be elected? So one thing particular you would like to achieve by December 24th. Um, I want all members of FAL to say that they've been to a social and they've thoroughly enjoyed it. I want to, the college to explore the international side of it more, so to appreciate the cultures more, and appreciate what everyone really wants. Yeah, I'd like to just, in general, have an average, an increased average of attendance to the social. Okay. Any other questions? Um, this is a question we just had. So you mentioned um, you talked about the business that you helped out with, and I was wondering what, what one skill you had to pick that you thought you developed the most and that you could bring to the table as social section to be elected. So the one skill that you gained from realistically budgeting. Okay, excellent. Any other questions? Is that is that a yes button or is that a no? Is that, yeah, come on. Shall we? Yeah. Shall we? Is it hard? It's hard. Are you alright with a hard question? Yeah, it's hard. Is it any issue or pages on the format or what's the capacity? Yes, I saw it on the the Lucy website is where you put a fill out when you are arranging the social to show remember it had the like the costs per ticket and how many tickets you expect to sell. I remember eighty percent on much of that. Okay, any other questions? No? Okay, well, thank you very much. <laughs>
I feel like there was a lot of work to be done over the upcoming year in order to ensure high student interest and participation next year. If elected, I plan on running a much bigger campaign earlier on in the first term in order to target the new freshers in team. I feel like there is a lack of awareness among the freshers as to what JCR exactly is and the different roles it entails. Additionally, it is important to emphasise not only the duties of the position, of the different positions, but also the benefits students gain from being on the JCR, such as making new friends, changing things within the college, and enhancing their CV. If elected, officers should live up to the expectations they create about themselves throughout their campaign, and I will try to ensure they do if I was elected as chair. As an accountant and finance student, I deal with numbers on a daily basis and gain valuable experience in analysing companies' budgets over the course of my degree. Additionally, I I'm working with spreadsheets in most modules, which is a necessary skill in order to write budgets. Therefore, I believe I possess the skills needed to write FAR's annual budget efficiently, accurately, and coherently, and thus I will be effective in fulfilling the financial part of the role. If elected, I would like to continue the trend of this year's financial management, which means <coughs> the investing profits made during Freshers' Week to subsidise big events such as the Winter Bowl, making it affordable for all of our students. I would love to continue to be part of the great team, making a difference and partic uh, participating actively in the college life. And if you would like to see my German fiction seat again on next year's JCR Tech, vote me as your number one chair of the <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, so any questions probably go to Chris on Facebook. So we'll move on to Vice President of Socials and Events. <laughs> so for this, we have one contestant, and it is Rob Robinson. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Um, hi guys, I'm George. I'm a second year studying politics and IR. I'm running for DP Social. Um, <laughs> so three things: um, experience, socials, and extra experience. I was involved in my year 13 ball, sharing it. Um, it was only a, a year and a bit ago. Um, so I understand the importance of good organisation skills when it comes to organising the event. I was also a fresher rep, so I understand what the freshers want. I've got a few ideas, what they said, so I want to implement those. Um, and also, my main experience comes from experience. I'm like a fine wine, I get better with age. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry. Um, so, socials last year, you know, it's a freshman league, freshers ball, big night out, of course, extra. Um, so, I can build on these ideas. Socials. I am sport and lead the social team. I like to give a clear objective of where I want to go. Um, I also want to increase participation within the college. Um, and I understand the importance of the word team, so I really want to develop this. Um, I like to also create a social committee, so be a committee, casual or whatever, for lot of, um, students, then they can get some ideas, give me ideas, we can give their ideas, bounce a few ideas around, um, and that kind of stuff. I want to create more day trips. So, for example, Pendle last year they had a trip to see Jeremy Kyle. Um, you know, everyone would get Jezza K, <laughs> so it's a good thing. Um, and of course, it's some welfare issues. Yeah. <laughs> Extra. Um, one of the biggest events of the year, I really want to, you know, make it my own if you like. You know, no, I'm not really allowed to say this, but no one wants to be the furnace and not sell. And, uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, but I want to sell firstly. Um, I know important how good how good theme is so important, so therefore I want to really push that and get some ideas bouncing across. Um, I want to keep all members of the JCR in the loop and get it organised as quickly as possible. Um, and also, so some problems about that last year and years before, the Bonnie Steps. Everyone was on the Bonnie Steps and it just took a bit of emphasis outside from Wild Extra. So some solutions, maybe you could stagger the timing, or you could simply move the entrance from the body steps to this direction to kind of like avoid people going across. Um, also, yeah, bar queues are a big problem, so I'm sort of looking at having some extra bars, that kind of thing. 
and also um, I want some more events. So I want at least three events on the night. I want two events, music orientated, and then I want one non-alcoholic event for people who don't drink. Um, also, I was a big fan in Freshers Week of the bar being turned into kind of like a club atmosphere. So therefore, that might also be something to look into uh, because everyone enjoyed that and it was a good thing. Uh, so to conclude, the vote for me is a vote for great socials and fantastic extra. <laughs> Mentioned the amount of that you wanted to create a social group. Do you think this would take more than like two social groups? Like, because you're going to take that certain apology from yourself and from your social group. Because you're allowed to find students and their views. Oh, yeah, definitely. But I mean, um, at the end of the day, we are a college, and the ultimate decision will be from the social sector and the DP. And that's not going to undermine that, but to get more ideas involved, you know, an idea from just everyone who can throw ideas into a big pool of ideas. I don't miss ideas so much. Can we I just ask, ask the, yeah. Would you not think it's well as my group of you? It is, yeah, but at the same time, there's how many people? 500 people in five. So um, to get more people involved, we will get that then. Aaron, um, what aspects of Power Retro do you think went well? Um, what aspects of Power Retro do you think went so well and how much you try to do? I think the aspects were probably, that went well, I enjoyed the scene. Um, yeah, just, it, it was a good time, just admit. Aspects that didn't go well, I think, of course, the Bonnie Steps were just an issue for me, it just seemed to split the extra book. And everyone just wasn't in one area, it was a bit slow. I must admit, I mean, I've got some friends who didn't even go in the extra hours, they just said, you know, I found the extra hours, it's all right, but I was spending a lot of time with one step. You know, I was like, <laughs> you need to actually come into the extra hours yourself. So that was an issue for me. <laughs> Barcues, like I say, uh, they're an issue. And in a way, I don't like to say it, but I didn't feel like there was much going on. Sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> There was a plan to send off the whole body in set. So if you heard about this, yeah. but, and we were in contact with Lucy about this. But as a JCR, we took a decision not to, because we thought the body in set was an open source and open stream plan. It's yeah. part of our extra. Mm. So what would your opinion on that be? Um, it is a part of our extra, although we've got massive space you know, outside the bar and that. And then with, I must admit, the files. You know, like a little bit out here outside the bar, it is difficult because it is such an awkward shape. I mean, when you go to drive the old Belgium, it's one definitive area. Um, but with the Bonnie steps, it just seemed to be a bit too open, if you like. And then to fence it off, it's not a good thing, but a simple alternative like changing the entrance could actually stop people just literally just walking out, walking in, walking out, walking in. So. Um, aside from your old work, old age, and lacking <laughs> kind of similarities with a, a good wine, yeah. um, <laughs> given that you haven't been on JCR before, um, mm. what distinguishes you from the other four social events officers um, that are running for those positions, and how do you feel to be able to lead a team of two other officers when none of you would have been on the JCR before? Yeah, sure. Well, I mean, first I'd like to say that I've been on JCR before, but I've asked a lot of people about it. Like I've asked, um, you know, Michael Cole about stuff. But it was being on JCR before. I've asked Emma Herring about the extra that she did. Uh, just asked various people, so I've done a lot of that stuff. Um, but all differentiate me is probably the fact that I feel like I can provide, provide a good leadership role, and I also feel that I'm quite strategic in the things that I do. So. I know that I want good organisation, so that will lead to good extra. I know what I want to do. I know I want an agenda of ideas, set the table, you know, from the word go. And I just, I just feel like I can lead the social team and get a structure to what we're doing. Okay. Robin? You say leadership is just what's going to make you stand out. Can you give me an example of how you feel leadership? An um, example, probably. I know that I have said about chairing the ball committee. Not everything went well in terms of 
people were kind of like slacking and that kind of stuff. So I kind of brought it on my responsibility to kind of, you know, actually something's gone wrong. I'm going to sort it out myself. Yes, sir. Kristen, you ran for chair last year. Why do you feel you were like why you why the social media changed? Um, well, I ran for chair last year because I was first year, and because I do politics, I felt like it was a good thing. Sounds true, but I mean, uh, yeah, no, I um, yeah, I was first year doing politics, and it just seemed like a natural thing to me. Although having been a second year now, going to a few extra halves last year, pressures, you know, Liverpool, you name it. Um, I feel that I can, I've got the experience now of uni life, uni socials. I feel a bit more mature myself in this position. Um. Now, you mentioned in the manifesto that you want to create two music artists in the NSH as well as the non alcoholic event. Mm. How did that work? Well, um, the non alcoholic event can be quite like, small in terms of, you know, to get a little activity going. Um, but the two music artists in the event, I really liked um, Emma Heron's idea of a sound like this girl. She said that she, I don't know, Chris doesn't like that. <laughs> 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 um, but I really like the idea of that because it just, it, it sounds really good. But if you don't like being outside, you can go inside. You know, if you if you want a bit of quiet, just take the headphones off and have a little dance. Um, it's, it's just like, you know, just two things like that. I think it would just bring it all together and then if you don't like one thing, go to the other thing. If you don't like that, go to the other thing. If you want a quiet time, maybe just go to the bar. Mm -hmm. Have you had any experience of commanding your budget before? Yeah. Um, I must admit, not in particular. Um, but I don't see this as a massive problem, though, because, well, obviously, being out as a student, I might have my own budget. <laughs> I know it's not on the level of extra. But I do know about budget, and then my dad's an accountant. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but runs in, runs in the family. I don't know. <laughs> so, yeah. Right. As a second year, who and do you play? Do you mind if you start with one of their last year? How did they cope with the pressure of being in the same and maintaining the degree? Yeah, I, I, I stressed it a lot tonight, but I'll stress it again. <laughs> Organisation, I'm quite an organised person, and I know that. I'm at uni to get a degree, but also I'm at uni to have a good time. And um, I'm not <laughs> it sounds bad, but I've literally, like, for my deadlines, literally structured it to like how many words I've got to do a day. That just shows how organised I am. So I think as soon as we get back um, in January, you know, we start putting ideas in place, start organising it. So therefore, you know, just, I don't think it, obviously, it will be difficult, but it'd be nice, difficult to. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but when the question was asked about uh, your previous organisation experience, you mentioned going to the socials. Mm -hmm. um, could you just explain how going to the socials is actually experience and organising and, and actually um, kind of real um, any experience you may have had in organising and events on socials? Um, I may have been going to socials, just organising, but in terms of going to the socials, you know, you get you get to know the clear structure of how things are organised. So therefore, you, I, I can take benefits and advantages out of that. Um, obviously, I was in the Year 13 Board Committee. I said that, and that provides me some kind of like leadership skills, if you like, and some you know, some organisation skills. Um, yeah, but I mean. Yeah, maybe maybe me going socials doesn't directly say, oh, I can organise an event, but at least I've actually experienced it, and at least I can actually say, you know, it's organised in this way, could it be organised better? This is another question of ex-students um, on, on Twitter. Uh, what extra extra theme ideas do you have? <laughs> um, I really like the idea of kind of like two themes. So. A versus B. I really like that idea. And one theme idea that I had, <laughs> I, won't, I don't think I'll be able to be able to submit, but um, something like where you've got one concept that's totally different to the next concept, and then it gives so much ideas for just decorations and so many ideas for things like that. So, for example, you could do 
Lion King versus Breaking Bad, if you like. You know, you could do that. I don't know. Yeah, I don't, you're not, you're not as a uni, you have to do it. But I mean, I'm just giving an example of how you could do A, you know, nice little lions and B. <laughs> Uh, this year's Christmas Ball has sold loads of tickets and been a great success. The one thing it has fallen down on is it's not really a field to international students. Mm -hmm. How do you feel Christmas Ball could be better suited to international students? Um, I think probably Winter Ball, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that could be one aspect of Winter Ball, you know. Um, but also probably Freshers Week, you know, obviously. Uh, that's when I think the college mm -hmm. as a whole kind of like integrates together. So therefore, if we really put an emphasis, we say every year, but if we do put an emphasis on integration for air fresh then I think that would go through to the um, with the ball. Really. Uh, maybe there's maybe a bit of a problem with communication, I don't know, but you could, you know, literally just go around and say to international flats whether, look, we've got certain socials, you know, we've got um, winter ball, we've got extra, these are the big socials of the year, we just make you aware now. If you want to go, it's going to be a good time. So, should the future lectures be key to social and events? Um, what skill would you like to develop? So, you've already mentioned that um, we that you're organised, but is there mm. a skill that you think we could learn more about doing this one? Um, I think it would. Um, Skill wise, um, I think probably it would actually. I'm already quite good at it, like I said, I'm not saying timekeeping. It would also benefit my timekeeping skills because you'd have to literally, you know, for extra, it's got to be, um, you've got to make sure that everything put in place yeah. when it needs you to be. Do you reckon the role can exercise your creativity skills? Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, uh, I do politics, so therefore, <laughs> naturally, I'm not really that creative. <laughs> well, admittedly, though, uh, admittedly, though, I've got some great ideas that I want to put in place. You know, whether it be, I love the idea, I don't want to rip it off Pendle, but I love the idea that they did this Jer uh, Jeremy Kyle thing. I love the idea. I love the fact that you've got daytime socials, so you could, you know, we had an Alton Towers trip last time. I like that idea. Um, yeah, and I think extra it really will help me kind of get a few themes out there what I want to put in place and really kind of like make it cool. Really. Mm -hmm. So you social teams find them hard to work together as a team and struggle to get social together? How would you support them? I, li I literally, um, obviously, first of all, I think that. I've got quite a comforting attitude, so I said, I'd, I'd hope that would come to me. I think we probably would do if they're struggling or so. Um, and then I'd, I'd sit down and I'd say, you know, what are you struggling with in particular? Is it the workload? Is it, you know, how can we help basically? And there's, there's three members of the team. So therefore, I don't think it should be a massive problem if they're struggling because we can all model, you know, we are a team. So therefore, I'm quite happy to say, you know, I'll help you in whatever way possible. You know, I'm leading the team, so therefore I should be in the position just to say, I hope you are. Uh, what is your view on Lucy's sober duty policy, whereby there has to be one sober duty member for every 20 people? Do you think that should be more or less? Or do you think we should inside ourselves and not be dictating too by Lucy? Um, I quite like the idea of we should decide ourselves, but I understand that Lucy would have to put these policies in place, you know, because one college might say, Actually, no, we can have five people and so first, and then that's not actually people at all. Um, but I think it all depends on the social, really. I mean, like, for example, say, like a, a trip off campus, say, a Liverpool trip or Manchester trip, obviously, you've got to have more sober people for well, the number of people there, you know, more sober people, more sober duty. Because um, I know, say, if I was in my first year, and there was just one, one JCR member on sober, on sober duty. Well, 20 people, you know, that I would feel very in my Liverpool, so, you know. No, no offense, <laughs> no offense, you scouts in the I totally agree, but you look at my last name. Liverpool was the last place. Do you know?
now and what for in your life to attend what's the um yeah you're you're proud to attend the um social and lecture activities group. Um you're required to attend that and you can if the president mandate mandates it you have to attend the Lucy Council. Sam? Um we're making a departure from the social side of the questions. As one of the two vice presidents in the college, your job is to support the president throughout the year in what they do. Um, what would your reaction be should the president and indeed or indeed and uh, the other vice president uh, not fulfill in a role and leave you to do the work? How would you react to that? Well, it's obviously a, a problem. So if it, if that did arise, I'd raise it with the chair. Um, I'd hope that I wouldn't, but then I know myself was in a similar situation to that. So if it did happen, I'd do what you do and I'd step up to challenge. Um, if possible, if not, then I'd, you know, obviously we'd have to um, for general reasons. I think. Just on that, if when you mentioned step up to challenge, would you be able to see the president if they were not feeling that well? Um, <laughs> well, <laughs> well, well, I mean, I mean, can just be elected, so whatever. Yeah. So whoever's president, if they're not fulfilling their role, would you instigate uh, a vote in the confidence? And if they're not fulfilling the right role, then of course, you know, we've got to appreciate that we are all the same. You know, we are all on the JCR for the benefit of our college, so we'd have to, wouldn't we? Although, um, I think every step would have to be taken in order to ensure that that's not the case, because that costs is further disruption. But if it's completely necessary, then it's got to be done. <laughs> okay. Um, Christy? Um, when do you do the extra have you required to sign several contracts? Have you ever had any experience in contract negotiations before? Um, or on fire safety as well, than fire safety experience as well. <laughs> well, I mean, um, I live with Sarge and he's not uh, such a good cook. So. <laughs> 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 that's, my, that's my fire safety experience. Really. Uh, no, but I understand the importance of health and safety issues completely. And it's especially difficult to file because you've got steps outside the back restaurant, so I understand all that kind of stuff. Um, in terms of contracts, I'm not, I'm not going to lie, I don't have massive experience in contract signing, you know. Although, um, Obviously, I'll, I'll learn that on the job, and it's part of the experience. So, what that benefit me? Okay. Christine, yeah. um, another thing you mentioned was Q times, without going to extra, like Q times at the bar. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we had a number bar on the bonnet and steps. Mm. What other way did you use Q times bar doing that? Um, I had a, obviously, you could put the bars in the actual extra itself. Um, but providing that, uh, maybe you could do some kind of like drinking token system, maybe. I was thinking of an idea where you could have, say, a balloon drop. So I like the idea of having a pinnacle in the night. Oh, no, sorry, that was your idea. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, a pinnacle in the night, balloon drop. And then um, inside the balloon shell, you know, tokens for drinks. Or whatever. <laughs> sorry, was that you? <laughs> Sorry about that. Oh, right. <laughs> okay. Any other questions? Oh, um, when there was, there was an incident that occurred, we saw you re re take yourself away from nominating, withdraw your nomination, yeah. and you kind of hit. Yeah, sure. And then you left as well. <laughs> yeah. Why did you need to do that? Do you not think that shows? So you're not fully dedicated to the role? Not, not, not at all. I think, if, if anything, it shows my dedication. I think it shows that I want to be on this JCR. I mean, it shows that I've got ideas that I want to put in place and put forward. I feel like I can benefit the JCR. Uh, the person who put up, I, you know, I, I didn't want to run against them. You know, they're on the social team already. I didn't want to run against that. But saying that, though, I've got fresh ideas that I think can put in place in a new aspect of the role. Of course there is. Of course there is, yeah. <laughs> um, every year for the past, well, this year and last year there haven't been, but the year beforehand there nearly was. 
Um, big act for the Christmas ball, yes or no? Big what, sorry? Big act. Act for the Christmas ball. Um, yes or no? Yes or no? <laughs> that was the question. Sorry. <laughs> I don't really know about doing politics. <laughs> um, yes. Good <laughs> Okay. Jamie, if you have a No, no. Okay. Anyone else? Yes, Kristen, maybe? Uh, you have unlimited budget for extra. What are you going to do? Unlimited budget for extra. Um, what I do is. You can't have Project X. Project <laughs> X. Um, I'll probably go to. Ah, it's been mentioned before tonight, so I'll do it again. But a cruise, because I think it's just a great idea. You know, you can visit different places. You can have different activities going on. Um, so, for example, you can have like a swimming class. You can have a non-alcoholic class. You can have a poker thing. It's the opportunity is endless. So that's what I do, and you can visit different areas. Christy again. Um, one of the main points of our social teams was the volunteer and ticket price. Mm. That's been considerably low and that's been reduced. Is this, what's this for? Uh, winter ball. Oh, winter ball, yeah. Winter ball. Christy ball. I think it's been about 30 pounds. Do you reckon you can guarantee that it'll be a long price connection? Um, I, I think it would be because looking at how fast tickets have sold this year, it's been a big success. I think part of the success for Winter Ball was actually as well in the Freshly League, but I'm in the Freshly Ball. At first I was a bit sceptical of that because I quite enjoy my Freshly Ball, but at the same time I can appreciate how it takes, it takes the uh, emphasis you know, away from Winter Ball. But yeah, they can show up, yes, like, um, I think ticket. Yeah, cheap ticket price for the right thing, especially for students. Um, what are you, some of the data I have this year? Yeah. <laughs> a fair share of social duty? Yeah. Uh, what methods, what ideas would you put with the results of you? Have I problems with social duty? Um, I just literally sit them down and say, look, we're responsible. Um, we're responsible for the people we're taking out. Like, and, and I literally stress it, like, if we go out to Liverpool, um, I don't want any freshers or students getting lost in Liverpool. It's on my conscience, it's on all our consciences. So I literally stress that to them. Um, and then literally I'd, um, I'd have to raise them to JCR if there were any massive problems. I don't want to see JCR in the pissed, you know, literally on the floor when you're in Liverpool. Sorry for the language. Uh, <laughs> but I don't want to see that at the end of the day. So. Any other questions? Sam's arm sort of moved like that as he raised the twitching. He wants to ask us. I think it's strange enough. It's just time to move on. I, I agree. <laughs> and Jamie's left as well, so I'm not going to do this question. You can go. I know you don't. You're right. Give me that look. Um, <laughs> no, 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 no. Are you sure? Okay. Vice President, I'll ask the next Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. Yeah, hello, my name is Luigi. I'm a second year law student, and I'm the current academic officer, which is Chambers and for Media and Education, I think. And I'm running to be VP of Welfare. Uh, although I've been academic officer for a limited period, obviously, I feel like I've achieved uh, quite a bit for the time I've been here because I've done, I've helped organize the CD workshops, which have been very, very popular, surprisingly. And, and I've also been in communication with UPP about having concern boxes in uh, our old buildings, new file buildings, because I believe the porter's office is not sufficient. And I've also been able to invite like, careers related. Societies do event like Bright Futures, Lucian Bob, and Naptures, which is later this week. So what would I do as VP Welfare? Well, firstly, I want to further improve the job sessions, work with them for a week, yes, sir. Uh, too many people are missing out. Like, every week, people have to leave after six because it's just not enough time. So what I want to do is definitely ideas like appointment only, 
sessions, geography specific, so second year sessions one week, first year sessions another week, third year sessions another week. Uh, more societies or maybe bigger ones, so maybe if we can be brave, go for a border way, go for like a huge company, I don't know. And maybe have more career advisors who attend because there are only two at the moment. And two people for like 20 people saying that are probably not sufficient. So if you can convince more careers and writers. Uh, number two, I want to continue working with UPD because obviously I've noticed that, well, I, I do realize that UPD are a huge company. And I don't think personally I can do it on my own. I'll convince them to like, put concerns boxes. But I feel like that's why I can, that is why I've informed the academic council. And it is part of the agenda for the meeting. So I feel like it might be a cost cross-campus initiative, which would be great if there are concern boxes in every building. I think we can put their concerns there. Another idea I thought of was an international night. Like, maybe like a youth club. I don't want to call it like a youth club. A youth club sounds so childish. But it's like an international night where, maybe a fortnight where international students can meet, come together, games, food, movies, pool tables. And the reason for this is because I've noticed that international students tend to complain slightly less than UK students. And I feel like this is an opportunity for them to be relaxed and have conversation. I feel like when you're in conversation and you're relaxed, that's an opportunity for you to raise concerns. And not just necessarily with in the VP welfare or the employability or the wealth officers, but with each other. One, one of them could say, oh god, I hate this lecture because this lecture does this, this, and this, I don't understand it. And they almost give them advice because they faced it before. So conversation alone could help. And I might not even have to do anything. I might have to talk to anybody. And this is something that's in the process of happening because I've spoken to Sue and she's booked some times in the next term to implement that. So it's something I want to work with the welfare team on and the employability officers. Also, I want to work with sports officers to increase engagement in our sports team because that's welfare, that's under the welfare remit. Because um, I spoke to the football team and it, I was told that they have supporters, but it's quite limited. Like they have netball girls who attend at times and some of their flatmates. I feel like as we define ourselves as the sporting college, we probably need a little bit more, a bit, a bit more support. And the welfare team, uh, the sports team, have began the process of uh, enticing people to come through, like initiatives like uh, free T-shirts and so. And I feel like it's something we should continue with. And the main policy point I want to run up is something I call a friend of five. Um, it's an idea because it's an idea I thought of. I don't know why, but it's basically, every term, I want Fired as a colleague to pick a charity. And I won't pick a charity as a VQ welfare, but I want the students to pick a charity. So it could be like, we can have an application form from, uh, from the communications, where they'll tell me, OK, I want this charity because blah, blah, blah. And as a, as a body, we will pick a charity together. And it mainly should not relate to charity. And then for that term, we will work together to raise money for that charity, to fund that charity. And the JCL would not run events. What I want is a student-led campaign. So the students, any student, <laughs> so if we pick a mental health charity for children, the students will pick a campaign, what they want to do. And they will come to us like, oh, JCL, we need money for posters. We need you to advertise it. We need you to call certain charities to come in and visit us. And I feel like it will get more students involved because they are the ones organizing it. So they will attend. It. And I feel like that's something I really, really want to put in as VP Welfare. Um, why should you pick me as VP Welfare? Because I'm a confident, non-stop, enthusiastic person. <laughs> I wouldn't be here. Like, I'm shaking right now. Right? <laughs> <laughs> also, I'm also excited for supporting the welfare team in the quest to love. That is my motto, Lao. <laughs> is to listen to your ideas, listen, Alpha, listen to your, your ideas and concerns, act immediately on those ideas and concerns, and learn how to improve, or learn how to listen and act on your ideas. And I've enjoyed working with the JCR in such a limited period. And although some people won't be back, I will miss them. We have a good unit. And I look forward to voicing our college in Academic Council, Lucy Council, and EWD. Thank you. I'll wait for the meeting. So we shall go straight to Simon. Um, it's great us and I really enjoyed the interview my best. I think it's a really comprehensive and interesting that comes on there as well. Um, two part question really.
given that you've only been on the JCR for a term yes. so far, uh, do you think you're managed, do you think you're able to manage a team of four diverse um, officers from a variety of backgrounds? And could you give me an example of when you've managed a team of people before? Yeah, that is a question I ask myself every day as well because I, I didn't I didn't make the decision that I spoke to some JCR members as well. Before I did it, I thought I spoke to current VP Wells like that. Like about it, and he told me that he was only there for a time as well, and he, and he ran for VP uh, welfare. And I have got experience in running because I was, to cliche, I must say this, but I was student governor, so I was in charge of the student body at my college, and he was a successful student body. I feel like I'm a compliment. I don't feel like I'm the lead, okay, as I might be the lead of the welfare team, but I don't feel like, I never phrase this properly, so it doesn't sound like, I feel like I'm a support for the welfare team. Like the welfare team is sort of for independent teams which come together, or two independent teams, or three, actually, sorry, forgive me, three independent teams who come together. So I feel like if the welfare, male and female welfare, come up with an idea, I don't tell them what to do. They will come up with an idea, and they might go to Dimitri, want to do this, and I will support them in that act. It doesn't necessarily mean I bust them around and say, like, sports officers, I want you to do this, this, and that. There might be situations where I might say, okay, sports, can we do this? But I feel like my job is mainly supporting them and running my own campaign, if possible. Like some other candidates have noticed, yeah, with pre application, our reputation well. What makes you change your mind and why? Oh, I enjoy my role. Everyone knows I enjoy my role as uh, academic officer. I don't know why. I just enjoy doing it. It's just it's fun. It was one of the roles where I could decide how much I wanted to do. I don't know if that sounds right, but I could, But then I spoke to Sue and other people, and I was told that I could continue doing some of the academic officer stuff whilst in this job as well. And I wanted to do more because I felt like. Not limited, but because my roommate meant I couldn't do employee data academic stuff. So I enjoyed that role, but then I could do that role <laughs> and some more. And that's why we went for EP welfare. You've run some great campaigns this year. What do you plan to do in the next year to bring on some events? Uh, yeah, like, I spoke about some of them because I feel like I'm quite enthusiastic about things I do. Like, I hate failing at something. So the idea of the a friend of fire, and I feel like it's such something that can be really good because we could just we could make it as good as possible. We can have students all over Firewood because I don't want us to be just be sports in college. I want us to be that is who we are, but I want us to be more. I want us to be known as the college that everyone's independent and do stuff. And I want every student to be able to come to the JCR and say, Oh, I want to do this and engage students more in that. That could help JCRs get more people run for JCRs because if they know I can organize a campaign to help this charity, in the future they could be the ones doing what I'm doing or what you guys are doing. So. Thank you. So I think your friend Fire thing is a really good idea, but I don't know if you know this yet because obviously it's still you're thinking about it, but how would you go about choosing the charity? So obviously there's a lot of charities, would it be the local charities or more of like bigger ones? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, I thought like that. At first I started the idea as any charity, you know, like, you can pick any charity whatsoever, but I thought, why don't I engage students more? So maybe a student related charity, then we can produce them up, be a Lancaster based student charity or Northwestern based student charity. So that's something I haven't fully decided, but and how do I choose? Uh, what I want to do, I don't want to start an application because charity, you shouldn't apply to other charity. Like, I don't want to call it that, but I want it to be like a process where maybe an online form where you send it to me and you probably say, this is the ideas I have, blah, blah, blah. And maybe in a JCR meeting, we'll consult together because we are one big team. But with my welfare team, we'll say, this is it. And may, I feel like we will choose a charity based on how progressed the person's idea is, like what they have. Because like, I want people who are really engaged, who are generally passionate about having those charities. Right. So would that like help the college get more involved in the community then? Because they sort of, it's just up here at Lancaster University. So. Would that be like an aim for it? Or am I misunderstanding? I feel like it's vice versa. Like, firstly, yeah, the college will get more engaged with the community. And our students will learn how to maybe so many skills, the kind of things you can write your CV about that. Like. And I also think the community can engage, engage with our college. Maybe those charities can come in the future to career drop in sessions. And mm. So and so there's so many possibilities for that idea that like so wide. Thank you. Thank you. When it comes down to planning pressures meet, the VP welfare is one of the uh, most instrumental officers in the planning. 
and most uh, important, the training of the reps. And should the whoever is elected president in this election, um, when they come around to plan in Freshers Week, if they follow the usual plan, it would be the VP Welfare who needs to train the reps in the welfare and international engagement seminar. Um, do you have any ideas, or could you suggest any improvements in the way uh, the reps interact with international students and uh, approach uh, every single fresher as a, an individual? Yeah, I did attend one of those training sessions as a JCM member, and one of my policy ideas when I was running for academic officer was uh, engaging international students at Freshers Week, and now we can speak to the moment. It, it was, I feel like it was a good training session. It was good, but it was to, it was not engaging, it was standing, like I'm doing standing and speak to you how to do it. But I feel like we could, we could engage the freshers more. Maybe, why can't we play at Why can't we play at it? Like, if an international student doesn't understand certain ideas, and why can't we, like, act it out? Like, how would you deal with it? Why can't the JCR member stand there and show them how you would deal with it and show them the authority and what you learn as a JCR member? <laughs> Rather than just speaking it, because which is, I don't think that's comprehensive enough. We could do that. Also, um, the idea of international reps is amazing. Like, I think it's like an idea that other colleges will suit, follow suit, and or they already have it. So, because the international reps is a great idea, and I feel like that's a way of dealing with such problems like that, because they were great this year. Any other questions? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Um, what do you think the most important issue is that's facing students over the next uh, year, and how would you campaign or get to it? Uh, the it's uh, the feedback. Sorry, um, the feedback is an ongoing pro uh, problem that, as student body and youth, we haven't figured out how to deal with yet. There was a campaign last year which pretty much died. So I feel like the feedback is such a huge thing because it's affecting thousands of students. It's evident that we're not getting comprehensive feedback in some departments. Some aren't, some aren't. And I feel like it's something we need to continue work at and pressure the university to pressure the departments to change. Because it's insufficient having tips on grade A and say you got A because of this and an explanation. That's that's not what you pay 9,000 million for. And I feel like the lecturers and the tutors have a more responsibility to the students to tell them this is okay. You got an A, but why? Why can't you tell them how to get a perfect mark? I mean, why not? Why well, they got a B? Why can't they? You tell them how to get an A? They got a C. So I feel like that is the biggest issue right now, which is something we will talk. We spoke about briefly at academic council, and it's something that we will bring up again. Yes, Simon. You mentioned that the academic council needs to be perfect. That's my next part. My next question is: Academic council need a new council, or do you feel they are useful or a waste of time, and why? Uh, personally, I haven't attended either yet because I'm, I was academic council uh, academic officer. Academic council is, I feel like, it's very useful because because it is such a oh, it can, okay. I will rephrase myself. It can be useful. I don't know if it's useful at the moment, but it can be such an idea that it can be. Because he has the JCR members, the the FTO, the CCO, the department reps. He has so many representatives of the student body in one group, which I feel like it could be very influential if we can work together very well. And this year is slowly getting that way. And if we can just come together an idea, it can be very influential because there are so many powerful voices in just one epic group. Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, the student loan book for the 1990s students has just been privatised. Um, how do you react uh, to stop any future sellers affecting any current file students? Yeah, the loan book is quite unfair because um, they don't say this, but it will cost students more because it's only really, it's only really profitable to the government. It, it's only really profitable to the buyers of the loan book if they increase interest rates. Because right now it's not very profitable for them. To buy. So the way they can make a profit is by increasing interest rates on our loans, which means we pay more. And it's it is a violation of students because we did not intend that. We were told we paid a certain amount, and the government is looking at our loan book and should be sold up. Um, it's something like academic council we were talking about that because academic council sponsored the teachers' strike. 
It's something for work and and not just us, but other universities and Lucy Council. Because we need to tell as a university <laughs> tell the university that the government and other the Department of Education that it's just not fair. It's not fair for the students. Because the last thing we want is to scare people from university because nine thousand pounds a year already <coughs> already has already there's already put fear to some students about applying to university because it's so expensive. Someone from last year, um, Kate Bear, uh, a year older than me, she's paying three times less than I am. And we're getting equally the equal quality of the degree is equal in quality. So I don't it, I just don't understand it. And it's the same now. It's just gonna put fear into students about applying to uni. Um, just on that, uh, who would you work with to publicise and campaign against something that might only happen in the future? Um, to ensure you're not just reacting to mm -hmm. an event you're actually kind of preempting. Uh, there's an hierarchy in the world, so obviously there's the CTO, which is uh, Helen, I think? And the, yeah, I don't, yeah, and there's, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm sorry if I got a name wrong. If you're watching, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, and there's also, and there's the, uh, Tom Cox is the, uh, the welfare, and Joe is the education. So those are the people you go to because as, VP of Fire College. I mean, I can say I'm influential in Fire College. I mean, influence stops at campus. But out of campus ideas like that, I'm really as good as the university, what the university does. So we need to work up the hierarchy and work together as one big group. The university, or the FTOs, need to work with other universities so we have a bigger voice. The Miji from Fire College, who lives in Cable Street, is not going to make the government stop selling money books. I'm sorry about that. There's only so much I can do. So yeah, so you have to work up the hierarchy and then just be like the student once again. If you were to be like the vice president, would you be putting your case forward to the president to be the VP who sits on the union council? Uh, I feel like that's the president's decision. If the president believes that, and the because it's the president to choose, because I don't know the VP social, I don't know what the VP social people are as of yet, so I can't say that. I feel like it's the president's decision that will judge, she will judge us all. Okay, take that back. Whoever's elected president will judge us based on our characters and how much work they feel like we can get done and what kind of personality we have. So I don't think it's up to me too. What's your opinion on the number of vice presidents in a college? Do you feel there should be two vice presidents or only one? In a college? I, don't, I do believe there should be two because personally, if I was going to welfare and social, socials would be in the library. <laughs> I'm sorry, but <laughs> like I'm not the most. I do go out, but I'm not like the most creative person with ideas and stuff. Like George is a lot. Like, George is crazier than I am. Like <laughs> so, if I was, I'd want to run for welfare, but then I'd be forced to work for social as welfare and social. And I feel like it's not fair on the college students and myself to run for a part of the job which I really don't want to do, but I'm forced to because I want to run for the other part. So I believe, I believe two VPs is quite important. It's clear from like your manifesto and things like that that you want to carry forward the work you've been doing as an academic officer. How do you feel you'd be able to balance out this with the like, welfare and international things that you'll have to do as, as well as vice president and not just get too carried away with the things you know best? Uh, yeah, basically, my plan is, um, as I said in my manifesto, all those are going to be working with those particular well uh, officers. I'm not gonna do those on my own. I'm not doing the the career drop in myself. I probably possibly I might not be involved at all. My idea could just be suggestion to the employees of so that uh, this is my idea. They don't even have to like it. They could just say, okay, I don't like it, I don't want to do it. And it's something I could put up to the JCR and I'm not the sort of person who wants to do everything themselves because I know I'm capable of and I know I'm not capable of doing all of my policies or manifestos myself. So it's something I work with every department on, department on or group on, and they may not all work, they may not all happen, but it's something I really want to do. Yeah. Any other questions? Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, um, similar question to what to the one I asked the VP Socialist candidate earlier on. Um, how do you react to the president or the other vice presidents in the colleges not fulfilling their role and leaving uh, you to do their work or take their strain for what things that they're doing? Um, I feel like it's not just up to me to take it up to because 
I'll, I won't, if it's generally true, I won't be the only person who sees it because the rest of JCL will see it. And it's something that needs to be talked about in meetings. We have to meet meetings. And as the, the candidate from DP Social said, you have to speak to the chair to put in a meeting. And I don't think I'm presidential type. So when you, I know you're going to ask me the question, would I ask my vote no confidence? Would I be sick of as president? Personally, I don't feel like, like I say, I joke with you guys in the, in the JCR office that, um, that if, if I was president of Firewood, Firewood would shut down, that was a joke. But I don't, personally, I'll be truthful, I don't feel like I'm a presidential type. So if there was a vote of no confidence, I would, be, I would not put myself up as president. I feel like I'd be a good vice president, which is quite different, but not a president. So if the president did a good job, report them. There's so many ways, the principal of our college, so many weeks ago about. Any other questions? In case, thank you very much. Thank you. And that brings us on to our final position and our final candidate, which is President Alex from China. Hi, guys. Um, Committed, reliable, and passionate. That's just a few things people who know me would say about me. But for those who don't know me, my name is Robin Chalinor. I'm a second year and I study geography. I've been on the JCR for the past year as a social events officer. I've also been de facto of the VP in social events officer role. But that's all. It's cool. I've enjoyed it. I've organised events such as winter ball, extra, spirit of summer. These events have also gave me a welfare side role to it, where I've been on sober duty. I've, I've led a team around off-campus socials, around Lancaster. I've been involved. So this brings me to the point of why, why am I running? Well, in the long term, last year, I really wanted to go for president. I thought I was a natural leader. I enjoyed the JCR. I think I could lead the team. I've seen how the, the current presence is around the JCR. I could see myself in it. And then in the summer term, when I started to get deadlines, got a new job, I thought, is president for me or not? And then this term, when I came back, I've got, I've got the bug again. I think I'd be a natural leader who would bring Val College up to the ranks, gives the students what they deserve, a quality education, good socials, a great welfare service, and also sports. Lusu and the SCR have all been experiences I've had this year. I've made great contacts with networking. I think I could build on this in this current year. And also I've got loads of skills. I understand students. If I take my current event to winter ball, I've aimed this all around campus. I've got students who probably wouldn't have gone to winter ball, have gone now because they can afford it. It's going to be a great event. I've became, in this past year, a more confident person. I've also, I've built, I've learned a lot about myself. Sometimes I can be bossy, but I know I have to rein that in. As a president, I would have to be a leader. I'd have to be fair but fair. I, some people might like me, some will. But I think I can build on this throughout the year. I'm also a part of Files at Netball, which is great for my teamwork. We also work from loads of group work projects. Um, sorry, <laughs> a bit nervous. Um, some ideas as become president. Fresh Week is a big, big part of the president's role. But this this year, I think, whereas, whereas the current president is organising Fresh Week, that was fantastic. I'd involve JCR a lot more. I'd give socials two days to organise, welfare two days to socialise. And I think that'd be. Sorry. I'm oh, fine. I'm just nervous because I wanted that much. <laughs> <laughs> My time management skills have grown. I've, this term I have got a job where I'm reducing the hours because I want presence so much. I think I can bring the role up to the college. Sorry. One minute. I think I'm a reliable candidate. When I get into some, I'm passionate. I want to run for college for the students. I'm just going to end it because I'm, I'm sorry. If you're looking for a president who has the experience, personality, dedication, and passion for this role, then vote for me.
small part of the sign. Um, great house, I really enjoyed this museum. Um, and you've got some great ideas. Both, you know, the question I have though is that both your house and your manifesto uh, heavily rely on the experience you've previously had. Um, the role of president isn't just an events organiser, it's actually a political position within the union. Um, would you like to give me a, a time when you've actually argued back to somebody to fight for your corner and, uh, and put your own interests aside um, for the benefits of the constituency you represent? Well, earlier on the JCR, I was a part of SEG before the rules changed. Uh, big, big, night now, big night out was the discussion, we had to pick themes, also what colleges wanted. And a part of our social team, I was one who spoke up for the first position on that role. Um, also, Sober Juicy came to say, and was also sat, sat on that when that happened. I think a call for file saying we we want this, we agree this, this is how it should be. Also, in meetings and within our social team, I've stood stood my ground. I think I've I've shown more than enough in the political department, to be honest. Okay. Um, for the organisation of Freshers Week, uh, would you be more likely to take Simon's style of approach of doing it all completely by yourself, or would you be more likely to take the approach of some, maybe some of the other presidents who delegate out certain parts and share the load between the rest of the JCR? Me personally, I would delegate but make sure it was controlled so I knew everything was going to be done, so I wouldn't just put it in someone's trust and they wouldn't do it. I'd make sure it would get done so there'd be deadlines. Make sure it's all prepared, but I'd, I'd love input from a welfare side, social side, so we get a range of events. So it is the student, we've got a, a wide range of what students want, not just my opinion. I know I can throw socials, but I can't do all on my own. People don't Any questions? Yeah, I'll just speaking to the president from the college and said about our person, the professional meeting in reference to reps. Um, he said, from his point of view, it's not about sober sub duty, it's about responsible duty. What's your thoughts on that? On Freshers Week, I definitely think there should be people who are on sober duty for the reps, especially on nights like Big Night Out, where you've got a large group to look after this. Responsible duty, I think, is good when you're on it, when you've probably got to sugar, and there's people there from Lusu who look after the freshers. But as the new students come in, they might not have been to Lancaster before. I know some people come on it on tours and open dates, but I think for the sake of their parents' worry and our worry, I think sober duty is a really good idea. And I think responsible duty is something for maybe later on in the term and definitely not on off campus yeah. subjects. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, how do you feel you would be able to choose the best, best vice president for Lucy Council, having never been yourself? Um, I think it's an experience that I've heard about from yourself and Simon. I think I'd choose the person I think would have the most important gain from that and feedback to the JCR in the meetings. I think I'd choose someone who would compliment myself and I know I could trust to um, feed back to the JCR and delegate the way back. Right. Um, as president, you would be leading the team of a whole JCR. What about if there was some dispute between other members between other members? What would you do about it or how would you do it? I think this past year on the JCR has taught me how to deal with disputes. I mean our social team have had our fair deal and to be about extra <laughs> or Christmas ball, Christmas ball. Um, I think it's dealt with it well. I think um, I think I could lead a strong team, but also I'd be fair, I'd listen to both sides and also get the chair involved if it were impartial view. I wouldn't I think I'd take an impartial view as well of whether I become friendly with more, but I'd probably want the probably want the JCR to become one instead of this club to be clicker as. Yes, Do you feel a JCR who are all very different <coughs> and do what they all agree with and suggest um, is better than the JCR who which is practical? which is fractured in the middle, um, not everybody gets on, but they provide things, but they are good about things. No, no, sorry, I think you need to meet in the middle of that. I think if a JCR are your friends, it's not going to be productive, you will treat it as a social, and I don't think that's really fair. I think as a president, if that happens, I would put the foot down and say, some way it's got to be done, it's not time to socialise, we need to get the views of students. 
I'd probably make sure if it was a friendly JCR then we would get calls out on Facebook, use the use of the publicity of the comments. And I think if it was a fractured JCR, I think try and get some teamwork and team building skills, like days, maybe involve the SR, get like that sports day where we can all bond and try and repair it, other than someone feeling overloaded with way of trying to make up for someone who's not going away. As I've mentioned before, um, the JCR is a political position, um, and it all depends on how involved you get. Um, but basing on the fact that it is the political position, is one of the eight political leaders within the student union behind the full um, officers. What do you think? In the, what do you think are the key issues that are facing the students on the campus and on a national level? And what would you do in order to lobby against it? Uh, especially with Cashier with the music degree, I think that was atrocious what happened. It happened to me you move to universities when they've chosen Lancaster, their university, they had good staff and for staff to move as well, it's not just the students. I think we should make sure that our students are protected, that their degree is protected. I've even felt far to it myself. There's only two people who took my degree and have changed degrees because of it. I think that really needs to be looked at. Also student loans, how myself come from a background where I need that loan to pay for me accommodation, me maintenance loan to help me survive. I think looking at that you need to help students, like we can do that from a welfare side, budget, often budget socials where <coughs> and also I think another thing for on campus students, make sure they feel safe on campus, which is a priority to me. Uh, every year this seems to happen. Would you change the structure of the JCR as well, as in like the number of positions for certain things, or bring in new positions to the institution or anything like that? I think that's something to discuss as a JCR, but myself, I might bring a <coughs> position because it's an extra body to help with events. For the past year, the experience I've had on the JCR, it's hard to get everyone together to help with events. They might help up to the running event, but actually on the event, I think restricting the social scene just to PA training get paid train was very restricting when three people out of fourteen people they could all be home for the weekend in my event. I think I'd get most most of the JCR trained up if we could and I think I'd probably want a lot more involvement with events. If you could change anything about Freshers Week, what would you do? This Freshers Week, probably the way it was organized. I loved Freshers Week, I did, but I think I'd like more input so the JCR felt that we were prepared. Although that's Sam um, was prepared and that was all done, I think this year I think I would have preferred to know like this is what the event is, this is what's happening, this is the drink deals, this is where we're going, just in case in incidents where uh, the JCR members did have a drink or they weren't fit to leave that, that role. I think if everyone knew what they were doing, there was someone always there in case anything went wrong. Any questions? How do you critically reflect on the current how do you critically reflect on your own performance throughout the past year in the JCR and what would you improve? Me personally, from working on the JCR, I think I'd work more as a team with the socials. I think communicate a lot more. I think looking back at myself, I think I've lost probably too boxy. But I think it got the things done. But I think as a president, I think I'd be more of a leader and give people a chance to either correct the mistakes or actually do, do the role. Also, I think I'd motivate a lot more instead of trying to do it all myself. I think I'd motivate the person to get them, not be bossy, just give them a bit more time. Fine. And just on that question, um, how do you critically reflect on the leadership of the JCR over the past year? Uh, what went well, what went wrong, and how do you improve over the next year should you be elected? Um, looking back on the JCR as a whole, leadership, I think, from yourself was great. I enjoyed it. You were fair, fair, more fair. My only critical point is that sometimes you didn't want it to fail like the other year, so you tried to do it all yourself, so you knew you didn't have to rely on anyone, so you knew it wouldn't fail. But I think I'd have a bit more trust in people, and if it started to go that way, I'd pull the reins in, speak to the chair, get, just get everyone together, and not people build it up and then it all come out, get it wild early, and get people to talk to each other. Uh, what's your view on how the JC <coughs> on how the discipline has been on the JCR this year? Do you think there should have been more warnings, less warnings to make people get away with it too much? Do you think the chair and the president should have been firmer? I think, think it was, was slack. 
I think it was slack. I was on JCL, I think it should have been done a bit more, not out in the open, but a bit more, everyone knew what was happening, everyone knew what was happening. I think, um, I think a few warnings should have been more official, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. Uh, any other questions? Um, I know personally, but I'll ask this for the benefit of anybody watching online. Um, what experience do you have in organising events? <laughs> <laughs> um, pretty much every event that I've run on the socials, I've had an input. I mean, I've had a great team with Aaron. I've loved working with Aaron. He's helped me a lot. When I've got stressed, he's been there to bring me back down. Also on extra, I think Chrissy, he did he did his best. But <laughs> <laughs> well, I think when I'm under pressure, I think that's when I come into my own. And when I, I do step up, I think I can run events efficiently. They're always on time. If something goes wrong, it's always easy. I can always fix it. I think I've done events from non-alcoholic socials to alcoholic socials. I think I think we've got the three best attendance files ever had on the Liverpool social. We had over 100 people from the to go on that. Winter ball sold out in two days compared to last year over three weeks. With a double the tickets were sold. Also, Spirit of Summer, an event, an event which I've organised, which got not just files but other colleges, which I'm really passionate about this year, is trying to get more into college events to get because I think the college system needs to stay in Lancaster. There's all these rumours that the new vice chancellor doesn't want. I think that's a really important point that I'll, I'll, I'll think as an event like Spirit of Summer, I think we should keep to get into colleges. And the feedback about that we just file people up from other colleges saying it's great to mix with the friends to have some fun. Could you name the vice chancellor, the pro vice chancellor, the deputy vice chancellor, and the three pro vice chancellors? Oh, 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 vice chancellor. Vice chancellor, I know he's from Warren, but. Deputy vice chancellor. <laughs> I'm already alive, so no. Pro Vice Chancellor? Don't know, but I would find out. Any of the uh, Pro Vice Chancellors? No. no sorry, Pro. Yes, yeah, yeah, that's right. I'll be the Pro Chancellor. No, not yet. No, but I was. Can you tell them? I wouldn't have asked them. Must have been just asking questions. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, yeah. Okay. Um, Aaron? This is a question that's been popped up on Twitter. What leadership qualities do you possess and can you give us an example of when you've been successful in um, I've been successful in leadership. I think I'm a good motivator. I really like people. I think I can influence people. I think I'm good at talking to people. I think I'm good at talking to people. I'm good at talking to people. I'm committed and passionate. Uh, I think I'll take the JCR again but there's other posts in my job. I've led a team around um, I went to Africa, I led a group of 20 adults and also taught a group of students out there. I led them successfully over the week and month I was there. Uh, on the JCR aspect, uh, of, no offence to Chrissy, but I think I've fell in as a natural leader. I think I've motivated the team to get some great socials out there. So, sorry Chrissy. <laughs> I've got another good, <laughs> good question from Twitter. What's the biggest issue facing the Students' Union this year and why? Students' Union this year? Um, like the current year coming up, what's going to be the biggest issue that faces the Students' Union? Students' Union this year. Um, like the Students' Union from all unions or R1? Uh, R1. Um, I want to say the strategic review, but I don't think that's right. <laughs> Um, it's not a loaded question. Pardon? It's not a loaded question, it's not a right or wrong answer. No, like, well, I think facing this year it will be students' willingness like to join in events that the student union are putting on and also being a part of the student union. I think people of students and disengaged in student union this year, like from this election, I think people are engaged with it at the minute. I think freshers have just came in and the uh, the more about the degrees, like the not bothered about extracurricular things at the minute, which I think the students union should promote a lot more. I think you need to market a, a different way to what they are now, but I can go on about that. 
What do you feel your role um, is within the other eight, within the other seven college presidents and the chair of the postgraduate board over the course of a year? I, I think it's to keep a good connection and also make sure the colleges work together. Well, well, at the rivalry, I think that's great, but to work together to make sure that we have strong links between, I think, not just intercollege socials, but welfare campaigns and international campaigns as well. And just on that, um, obviously I'm a massive fan of the college system, but if you had to eliminate three other colleges, which ones would they be? Finesse, Kendall, Cotman. Which one? Finesse, Kendall, Cotman. Okay. Any other questions? <laughs> oh, and those views are representative me. of the entire base now. Wow, that's too difficult for us to see. Just lost three quarters, mate. <laughs> <laughs> you can ask me the reasons why. Yes, Christian. You've got a lot on your plate coming from this last term, and you probably have even more on your plate. Do you think you have time management skills to cope with it? Yes, I do. I'm reducing the hours of work. I'm also going to um, concentrate on the degree a little bit more, but also have time for the presidency. I know what. Meetings I have to sit in, and I think I've got great time management skills. I've always made sure that I've attended socials. I've also made sure I've kept my, my degree up to a high standard. I've also made sure I've been at work. I think the time management skills are second to none. So, is there a skill you'd like to develop? Yeah, I think understanding people a lot more, giving time. I think gives more of a the big chance. I think I want to. Where if I'm getting to know someone, like not just like yeah. I think that. Yeah. As you're interested in the role of president, do you follow the activities of Lucy Council at all? Can you name any recent policies that have recently passed? Um, from the feedback from JCR meetings, <coughs> um, I know a lot gets said at Union Council. Mainly, some things get passed slowly, but um, and kind of recently. I know there's one about the culture of the um, race culture, the sugar house and sugar house prices and that. And I can't think what else. Also, is it not so much which one? I can't think of the sugar house thing, but yeah. Simon? Um, what is your view on women in leadership and how would you encourage more uh, women to get involved in leadership positions within the JCR over the next day? Should you be elected over the course of next year in the JCR elections? I think it's fantastic. Women should go for any opportunities they can. I think in Lusu also it's a good time to start promoting women in leadership. I think uh, not the only place to start with presence, I don't know. Um, I think women should have an equal opportunity just as men, but I think me personally it gives me confidence you know, for things like this. I think it shows that I can do just as good a job as anyone else, whether that be something male or whatever. I think I think it needs to be promoted more. I think people just need the confidence, especially international students. I think from many different cultures, I think you just need to promote that you can do this and motivate a lot more women to get involved. Question. Uh, a question from our favorite so he's in American Matrix. Uh, <laughs> his question is, showing how it's good, bad, overpriced, and price, what's your opinion on it? I think it's going through a transition at the minute. There's new people working there. I think they've listened to the students, they put the prices up, it didn't work. It, we're in Lancaster. I mean, if I take from back home, Liverpool, I love Liverpool. Clubs there, it's £10, £6 to get in. But that's a big club. They offer you great deals there. I think Sugar House, They've gone back to, I think the price is actually right now at the minute, gone back to okay. I think I have a good night in Sugar House, you feel safe, whereas you go to other clubs, you don't feel safe, you, there's always buses back. I think people have got to fact with that in, like you do put buses on the security guards. Um, I think Sugar just a good night out for me personally, I enjoy. Simon, how would you deal with a member of Fowler College um, who is particularly irate about something? and he's intent on telling you what they feel um, and their opinions. How do you deal with that? Should you be confronted with that? I in think I'd... your everyday journey across the spine? Uh, I think <laughs> if, if it was on the spine on the way to a lecture, I think I would say, 
add me on Facebook, mess me, I'll make meet all the other the time. If they were really that irate, I think I'd take them to a, a private room, make a group study room or JCR office, listen to them, make sure they're calm. Uh, if they're still irate, I think I'd probably take them to Sue's office, get some like reassurance. I think I'd just listen to them, see what the problem was, see if you could solve it. If anything to JCR, just try and find out what the problem was. Can you give an example of a time that you've been Mrs. Nasty and uh, told somebody no, despite their best dreams, and hopes, and intentions? Uh, Aaron wanted to do a trip to a away, and <laughs> due to budgets and me just thinking the students wouldn't go on it, I said no, like a harsh, crap the whip kind of this my arm. Do you have any hesitation about telling people no? No, not really. If, 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 if I'm passionate and if, if, if I think an idea won't work or I'm passionate about an idea and it's something I want, like Winter Ball is a good example. I know where I wanted it and know I wanted it to be low. I know we could do it. I stuck my ground and I think we live the best Christmas ball about Winter Ball on campus. I think, um, <laughs> yeah, no, I think, I think the, the value, I think I can stand my ground, I'm not scared. People can tell me what they think, I'll take it, I won't get angry at them. I think um, I, I don't I think that's one cause that I've got that I can listen and but also I can adapt. It's probably slightly to do with the chair, but it would involve you as well. What's your view on democracy within the JCR? Do you feel we so for example do we vote on enough things or do you feel it's fine what it is? I think we vote on things but it's not official like we don't do the hand raise like I think we all just kind of go yeah and then it's it's that I think maybe in the meetings it needs to be a bit more formal but I think if it worked we've worked we've, I think we've worked well as a JCR we've got things fast but I think maybe this next year I'll just get a bit more fun. Christine? You could change one thing about the current <laughs> <laughs> In fact, they like to tell stories. Like, <laughs> literally, on a night out, and just tell something for me stories. Like, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's not, not really, it's not, I'm not going to stoop to Christmas level there. Um, <laughs> your honest answer, um, aside from the president, which officer do you think is a man? Is the most valuable to JCR and what they do and what they bring? Uh, the position, or like the, the position. Company, the position. Um, I think not now, this year, I think it would be the education and employability officer. I think that's becoming a, a, a position that needs someone who will bring the college up because I think that's a, I don't think people have the confidence to say, I need help with my CV. I think if we promote it enough, and I think the AGs especially are panicking. They haven't got a graduate scheme or they haven't got a job, I think they panic. I think that is probably one of the positions I'd say is up and coming and I think it's very that needs to be valid. Any other questions? Of course. Do you know what uh, the file points comes from well originally? Ooh. Oh. Okay. <laughs> That's what I want to say red. Um, not necessarily on the student side of things, but what impact do you think you can have at college level, for example, if there's a management meeting, there's a syndicate meetings, like things like that, what impact do you think you can have at a whole college level? I think regarding to the syndicate and management meetings, maybe, I don't know what the things I've got maybe get into the students, say look about this man for me and maybe get some feedback off them. Not like tell them what we all say, like there's a minute to there, but I think I'd probably see what was said in the syndicate and if was passionate about something and discuss it with the JCR and see if this if there's a campaign we can run. Because I, I know through syndicate and management meeting we found out about uh, the telephones and the houses which I think we all had strong opinions on. I think we needed to feed that back. Um, I think if I felt something was said in there, I think get it out straight away. Um, you said in your host that you being me, you really were from the president of the Red Cannon Ball and the you know, scheme. What's made you actually crack the ball for you? I think I've always wanted it, and I think I was motivated to go for it. And then in the summer term, I thought I came to uni to get a degree. But then this term, 
I haven't balanced in a degree of fine, but my time management skills are more than I think I think I'll be a good president. What is your view on the fact that this is an uncontested election? And what are you going to do to convince the students not to vote for a vote? I'm a bit gutted that no one went for it, to be honest. I think it's a position that, stuff, that many people went for it. But I know a few people who said they were going to run for it, but I like the fact that my name scared a few people off. And the fact, <laughs> and the fact that I think got, people have got confidence in me when I settle in, I've become confident. I think, I think in the next year, I think we need to connect more with the colleges and JCR, try and get more people to run for the big positions. I think people think it's the JCR is this big cliff and like it's only certain people who get it. Like if you're on JCR, you'll bound to get it the next year. I don't think it's that at all. I think we need to change that view. I think we need to get more people going for roles and saying, look, if you've got the experience, you don't have to be on JCR. You can be a freshman, go for it. Try and try it. What's your opinion on management and syndicate meetings? As in, you want, because there was some argument among the JCI that one was more important than the other. Do you think that was a or can I just also say something before Christy finishes with the first answer the question? That has also come up in the press conference several times, and the, in, the uh, opinions ranging across the current presidents and colleges are uh, interested in consistency, um, but it is a college wide thing. So I just like to add, add the extra emphasis on the how important that question is. Yeah, um, I think I think from far as we're close to our SCR, so the management meetings are important. I think syndicate is really important though as the positions have lowered this year. I think we need to get the feedback so we know what's going on. I think the university should close us out from it. I think we need to know what's going on. We are paying to be here. We want to be here. We're concerned about what's happening in the university. And for the benefit of everybody else who isn't aware of what they're talking about, can you just uh, explain um, what the kind of syndicate it is? Yeah, so it's going to be all the higher body industries <coughs> and the council all come, is it? I think it's every few weeks, is it? Or? It's before a meeting. Yeah, yeah. Um, before Senate. Yeah, before Senate. We have, a, we have a syndicate meeting and we get fed back what was said in the last meeting, what's going to be said, what's our opinions on it. Uh, we have a... Um, our college principal go on to it. Um, it discusses things from getting rid of the phones to where the money's getting spent. Yeah. As a president on Lucy Council, <laughs> you get the opportunity to nominate yourself to represent the Lucy Council and other bodies such as EVD Council, Lucy Exec, Senate, that we've just mentioned, things like that. Would you be interested in doing any of these things? If I think, so, well, I think you need one. to get more of an understanding of everything. I think if if it did get elected, I've got a few like a few, a few weeks not to get. No one week. one week. I think I can get. I think from what I've done this year, I think you can get up to date on what who who everybody is, what goes on. And then I think if I felt cap capable of representing the students, I would. But if I thought was a candidate that would represent the students better, I think I'd let them do it, but I'd be more than enough if I felt capable. Mm -hmm. A departure from the usual serious questions, um, do you know what name the windmill is that filed at this logo based on? I'll give you a clue, it's also one of the names of the buildings in the Well, is it thought and more and all leave them? <laughs> 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 No, the no the one that the windmill, which one's it in the far mm -hmm. Um What's it the house called? I don't want to say that. Um, no, say one, I don't know. Then you can tell us the answer. Maybe if you want to find one. Is that a question or no? Okay. Any final questions? I know I mentioned earlier on that your manifesto in the house is pretty much a relevant spirit. So there's another thing that we'd like to do next, uh, something or that you would like to achieve by the end of your time in office, should you be elected. Um, could you just elaborate on one point that you would really, really love to see? There's just not one thing I want to concentrate on, though. I think if we have a JCR, that's the best for the college. 
We've produced some great campaigns, some socials, we've all worked together as a team, we've worked well with the SR. I think I'd be really happy to achieve something that the college, the college felt like they were more involved with the JCL, that we got rid of this aspect that, that we're in place, that it's just students who know each other who get it. I think I, think I just want to be a part of something that people get want to be a part of. I think that's... Could you give me something that's realistically achievable and measurable um, that you can say that you've done at the end of the year? Yeah. Um, give me a reason to vote for you as opposed to them. That's the wrong, yeah. Um, one thing on some campaign, I think probably to increase college spirit and the collegiate system, I think that's a, a point I want to get across to all students to make sure that the students' voices are here. Because I think the majority of students do want the colleges, that's why the students are fantastic. Any questions? The windmills could fall. Matt Twigg's being useful as ever again. Uh, say, <laughs> is you had to fight another college president, who would it be? Or which I don't condone violence and maybe some other school for a week. If it was an argument, then maybe. Any questions? You know you got a Go on, go on. Make up for it. I have a bad speech and I'll make up for it. You'll probably throw over this should you be elected in the Union Conference at the start of next term. Um, not a conference. No, it is. It's not a conference. Um, which, if you were going to be a political animal, which political animal would you be? And bear in mind, the resemblance of an animal is often how Described in terms of the version. Well, no, I don't really look like one for a giraffe because I'll always stand tall. Ooh! <laughs> 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 Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Any other questions? File hostings 2013.
Hello, Joe, then I'm not going to come